This is General, not a robot. Definitely not a robot. Please don't shoot me with a poison arrow. <laughs> okay then. Not a robot. And that's the next university. How much money will burning the capital's admin dev give me? 444. I'm not burning admin. No. Greybeard is offering to provide a gifted counsellor for the Royal Council. A 50% cheaper granite dwarf. However, we'll be considered in their debt, or we can say no. Granite dwarf doesn't help us. Because we don't get the... Th well, he's 50% off, so I guess he would have. Would have been even better if he was a... Amber Dwarf. I'm trying to remember what we were. Getting awfully close to the Diplo power again. You know what? I really should have built a... University on one of these, so I can start immediately developing it up. Uh, what I was trying to do was click on the regular province. Yeah, see, a 33 development hold would be very cheap to develop. Especially now that it's been restored, so let's try and get the university here next. Just accept other dwarf cultures. I mean, they already are because we're the Empire. So does that... Oh, we can see absolutism now as well. Right. I need to start purging some of these from... the guilds, like this can go. That will piss them off, though, so we can get rid of the clergy. I don't know that I necessarily want to. I can sell some more titles that I do want to do. And then with that money, we can start building the other universities. Okay, so the only university we now need to build is Mordhold. We've got the others going. And then I think I'm going to start paying off loans. I think I've got to. Like, this interest is just so high. Get rid of the loans, then we can start working on the corruption. I think I was doing the wrong thing going for the corruption first. And there it would be, the final mill tech. Do it. Traditionally, we're unable to fight effectively in lands which did not supply a lot of food. However, our troops have become a lot better at acquiring food, allowing larger armies to fight. That is going to allow me to get the policy to drop regiment. Oh, that's regiment cost. It's not upkeep cost. Superior fortifications during wars would be useful, but right now, not so much. And then, yes, we are definitely going for economic ideas. I think we've basically got to potentially trade, but I think that economic is just going to be such a strong choice for us. The other thing we could try and do, actually... Mm, that's a lot of money. No, I'd rather that just spread normally. Truce with the command has ended. <clears throat> How expensive are the forts? Not hugely. 21. About the same as the states. The Askani Wars of Consolidation. War has come to the Askan. 
These are not scattered skirmishes to which the Ascani have become accustomed, but war as it was practised before the green tide. The sound of town criers and haggling merchants will soon be replaced by gruesome destructive cacophony of cannon fire. Hey, I can sell you some of those. For the Ascani, the horrors of war offer financial opportunity. The number of adventurer captains offering themselves the highest bidder has risen dramatically, and there is no shortage of veteran soldiers willing to join these mercenary armies. Combatants in major Escani wars will gain access to mercenaries from beyond Escan. War of Consolation Casispelli has become available. Whoa, that's a lot of new companies. Royal Sadi, Vivinar Cavaliers, the Esteban Free Riders, the Small Company, Pink Lady Band, the Dwarven Cartel, mercenaries, Free Bardswood Hunter Company, Moonspear Rifle Corps, the Moor Lords and Captain of the Allen. The Moor Lords instead of the Warlords. That's good. And the command is embargoing me again. And I'm losing some Diplo points. So. Did Grandstadt get its university? I think I'm going to do that twice. And then I think I'm just going to pump a bunch of points into Grandstadt. So the other thing I need to do is make sure that you have dev cost reduction. So each point of development right now is costing me nine points. Nine. Well then, uh, let's go for some military. Let's go for some admin. Couple of production. Some more admin, because I want to make sure I can get the tech. Oh, yeah. 5%, not 10. But upgrading the central trade here isn't going to be that useful. No, I'm going to save that money. Then the one that I really want to get developed is this one. Because glass... Although it does cost 183. This one's still only 86. Why are you so cheap? Oh, because you're a level 3 cavernous hold. This one isn't. This is only a level 1, I think. Right, and you're ruined at the moment. Yeah, your price will come plummeting after that. Um, I think I want to actually develop you until you're like... a 100. That'll do. <clears throat> um, I mean, that's still two years away, so yeah, repay. Okay, so some of our finances are definitely starting to improve. If we raised an army, we would still be earning 35 ducats. How do I have debt? Horde curse. Cost me about 15 grand to get out of it. So I'm going to stop doing that. I'm going to say, hey, you got some roads which clearly belong to me. Namely, to have a rod 75. And then we're going to go. Ooh, look at that. Conquest CB. Well, ain't that a shame. No, you know what? Before I do that, let's make sure we've actually got some morale this time. Let's move you forward. You can no longer do rebel suppression. We're going to move you up to here because I'm expecting this to be a major hot point. So they can come in there and come in there and there. So there are three locations where they can get in and then basically our fourth army is going to be on the offensive. Does anyone else think that development's done poorly in E4? I quite like development in E4. I like that you can choose where I get built up. And then Horde Curse to Electric Boogaloo. Yeah, the banks suddenly get Horde Curse because they're like, there's so much money that he owes us. 
All right, Master of the Mint just died. Uh, ooh, the inflation reduction. I think that might be useful. Let's get you to level three. Oh, good lord, that's expensive. Yeah, see, this is not impacted by our religion. It has to be Amber Dwarves. Chat was trying to tell me earlier on that as long as they're accepted, they get the cost reduction. No, no they don't. That's a bit annoying, but I can't afford him. So Amber Dwarf, unrest, production efficiency would be good. Let's go with you. And there we go, five ducats less. Much better. And we can go ahead of time in admin, but I don't want to just yet. What tech are you? You're on 50, still on 15. You still don't have the improved cannon. Yeah, we're already an empire. Alright, let's do this. War with the command. We're going for Davarod 75. And then I'm going to take a two minute break. So if you need to take a break, I'd recommend you do so now. I will roll an advert while I'm not here, seeing as I'm not here, so I might as well. So two minutes, everyone, and then we shall resume. Two minutes, everyone. All right, I am back again. Switch back to E4 and get back into the game because we got a war to fight. Let's do this. I think I'm just going to use the army in the north most aggressively. You can go and stomp them, actually. Lovely. Oh, bloody hell. 6.7 morale against 4.6. Instantly. Oh dear. And these guys decided not to join in. Yes, probably wise. Loans being restored. That's okay. Just means I need to spend a little bit of admin just to keep this down if I can. <laughs> God damn it. Velko Gulan declared war on Eliena. So Velko Gulan starting to really get involved in external affairs. You know what? You can start conquering these guys. Trading in Mithril, no longer. Don't get the prestige benefits. And I think we definitely want to grab Verkal Dromak this time if we can. Oh, they're back. Let's go and stomp them. Uh, slightly closer this time around. Still rather one-sided. Oh, 1,400 to 8. Like in the shock phase, we tend to fare a lot worse. But in the fire phase? Oh my gosh. 60,000 against 17,000. Are we going to hold? That is the question. Oh my lord, they are throwing men at me. Uh, let's send you down south, because we may actually need some reinforcements down there. At this juncture. Oh, we've got cannon in the front row, so let's have you lot just back off. That's quite alright. <laughs> you did yourselves proud. Also, they have a level 7 shock, so they have a special general. Zork the First! Um, they took 28, that's plus 9, so that's going to be 37, 38, 39, 40,000 casualties to 4,500. Yeah, I would say that Sir Squire, he did okay. 50k, I miscounted apparently. Well, we have some reinforcements on their way down, so they should be able to deal with the rest. Just 
Just how far are you retreating? Quite a long way. That's a bit irritating. But they are having to throw in like a full 80,000 just sitting on that province right now. And they keep on sending more. Like, is that their army? 93. That's, that's the majority of their force right there. They don't have a lot left after that's done. Switch generals. I'm just going to wait until these guys arrive and then just merge the two. And then I can also do a shift consolidate. And then we can jump on them. Although, actually, I probably shouldn't have because we're pretty well drilled. I should have just gone in with the... Uh, not full strength. That this is actually their full army. This this is every soldier that they've got. Uh Well here goes. Thirty six thousand brave dwarves versus eighty nine thousand hobgoblins. And we are taking more and more stuff. Uh one potential issue with this. Is we'll need to put a fort there or there. I think I'd rather have one here. So perhaps instead of going over there, we should take more of the caverns. They retreated. 19,000 against 2,300. So not quite as good odds, but still pretty darn good. And let's have the secondary army under Virgil again. We'll just back off so that we're out of sight and see if they decide to come at us again or not. You never know. They might well be that silly. Development's going up quite nicely. Oh, we are. Damn it. <laughs> we're several months into the next section. Okay, this is. It's, it's got to be economic ideas. It really does. Unrest and stability cost. Artillery cost. No, artillery combat ability. Economic plus offensive. Oh, okay then. If you insist. And then with that, we are now ahead of time in um, admin and diplo, which also means that we are 20% more tax and production. Which should help with the finances, although we are staying positive finance this whole time, even though we are replacing losses. Not that we've taken that many. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave you nearby and we'll send you north again. Whoa, not that way. Come on. Use the railway, it's what it's there for. Eleven nine, eleven nine. Yeah, that's, that's normal. This will be an instant stack wipe. Oh, they're <laughs> coming in with their full armies again. So, you lot need to return, I'm afraid. I mean, the nice thing about all the battles we're fighting there, on our own terms, I should mention, is that it's keeping these northern armies just completely free. And this army is being completely just... They're complete troopers about just not giving up. Admittedly, everything in front of them is just immediately just being obliterated. The enemies are on, like, our flanks. They're like, I'm not getting near the cannon. That's suicide. Are you, you going to win this? You are going to win this, you absolute madman. All right, so that was a 32,000 kills for 2,800. And I can't believe you actually pulled that off and lost only 4,800 total. In that case, uh, we're fine. I think at this point, we've kind of proven that we can shatter their army. And they're going to have some real problems with maintaining their forces. Suddenly, Twitter seems cleaner now. More kind place. Yeah, I'm not surprised. The moron in chief is gone. Although, isn't he back again now?
Actually, versus the cannon, dwarves one, orcs zero. Yep. Our cannon are pretty amazing devices, to be fair. Alright, looks like they're rallying for an assault up there in the north. I think I've basically just got to keep on throwing myself down in this situation. Otherwise, they will send more forces north to go and fight in the tunnels, which is actually where they're going to be doing slightly better. Because in many of those fights, they'll be the defender. Unless, of course, I just park an army on that province, in which case they, they won't be. And there we go. Battle is joined again. Another glorious victory for the good guys. Land attrition minus 20. Oh, man. If Squire had got ruthless, that would have been pretty amazing. However, in the meantime, we can pay off another loan, so we may as well. Oh, they actually perma- Really? Oh, brilliant. Well done, Twitter. Well done, Twitter, indeed. Um, yeah, we're going to need two armies to trap this group in here. We're going to go and grab that hold just because we can. Restoration of Mordhold. Done. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cancel this edict. Oh, no. Mordhold's in this... Ah. Alright, get it back again. No, not that one. That one. Didn't realise that Mordhold was in the same region. Then we're going to want a university, which we can't currently afford. Alright, we'll wait. It's fine. They banned him and they're going forwards with the impeachment next week. Good. The question, though, is whether the Republicans will support the impeachment or not. Not that it matters anymore, actually. Democrats control the House. Internal conflicts beginning in 1622, Sala Feogan faced almost a decade of utter chaos, slowly consuming the country from within and bringing it to the verge of collapse. That's, that's a shame. Oh dear, I seem to have caught one of your armies. What a crying shame. Right, you need to move down to stop them taking anything again. And if we can just sit on this province, then that would be great, because then we're completely guarded in taking all of this. We just needed to make sure we got the, the guys behind. Alright, these ones are trying to sneak away. But they are going to be trapped as soon as I move here. Oh, good. We won that fight. That's good. Like, we are absolutely demolishing them here. So that would actually require a 92 war score to take the hold. If, however, I stopped at the edge of their land and went this way instead, that would be a 35, then I could take the rest in money. Let's aim for something like that. <clears throat> I think they're throwing in some more soldiers over here. Ooh, no, we actually managed to catch them out. They can unfortunately go through there, so I think we are going to need a, a fort here and a fort here. That fight may actually not go our way. We don't have as good a general, and they are throwing reinforcements in. And I think this is probably a minus one. No, it's minus two. All right, reinforcements arrived. That's some extra blasting available. Although our infantry lines are looking kind of fragile. Hmm, this is not going well. You go and hold on to that, and you back off to there. Or there. <clears throat> so, unfortunately, they took my advice and started actually fighting in the tunnels. Which is most unfortunate.
Oh, hey, Grugi, how are you doing? How do the estates work now with the new mechanics? I played Emp Ambanar before Emperor. Uh, really well, actually. Uh, they've added a couple of new ones, like the Mage Guild uh, and the Adventurers. Actually, the Adventurers have been kind of fun. Uh, I do kind of wish there were maybe more events related to these guys, giving you like extra opportunities if their loyalty or um, influence is high. Particularly the adventurers. I feel like they should be the ones giving out quests. But I, I do like how this is all working. Like, Ambanar right now is in a really strong place. Uh, one of my favorite features is how the dwarves, and actually how the Canorian successor states function. What they've done, it's going to be a bit hard to show you here. Is there anywhere left? Yeah, like up here. All of these provinces, uh, not really have really, really high number of natives. There's like 10,000 natives Huzzah! in each of the uh, underground tunnels. And then most of the playable nations are just one province miners and they have to clear out the uh, native uh, units around them and the natives are all orcs and goblins in order to expand. And that means that the map is really dynamic. So the land that I've claimed here of, in of Dal Kanzad is because I've been fighting those orcs and goblins and I've been relatively successful in doing so. Likewise with Hul Yorkad, they, they were also very successful. But then some of the other holds, like this little guy down here, Shaz Tunda, wasn't in fact. I think that's actually their second uh, version of it because there's another one which starts in that hold. But it does mean that it's really, really dynamic who controls the mountains. Like in this game, we've been lucky and the dwarves have been really successful, but the orcs function in the same way. There are like civilized orc nations who are trying to do the same thing. And similarly over here, so all of these nations are successor states to a very large nation that was wiped out and is just empty. So it works a lot like the colonialism, colonization of America in vanilla. But these are the actual nations. This allows the political dynamics to shift radically every game. It's, it's kind of interesting. And then, like, the main Anbanar area is a lot more fixed. It's a lot more vanilla. Um, but yeah, it's really good. I'm very much enjoying Anbanar, and I can't wait to see how these other areas that are still empty are going to evolve. I wonder if the devs will do anything with the new tribal mechanics, i.e. indirect land ownership. I strongly suspect so. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they keep the conquering land mechanics for the good guys, so the dwarves and the humans, and then use the tribal mechanics for the orcs and the goblins as they're moving around. They might do that. Um, plus, they do still have this continent down here, which is not done yet, which I think is going to be mostly gnolls and kobolds, and then also this area over here. Like, these are all just uncolonizable because 000 development. So the AI doesn't tend to colonize that. And then the actual new world, which I don't know much about because that's all been hidden. I have no access to the outside world. Oh, the other interesting thing they've done is the use of straits. So they've actually used inland straits to mimic the tunnels between mountain ranges. So, for example, there's a mountain range here and then a mountain range over here. And then there's a tunnel connecting this area and this area underground. And that uses a straight crossing to allow you to move between them. <laughs> 